Of those. So the, that's the only public hearing we got. So that's yeah. Uh, Ready? Yes. I'd call a meeting in order. Please rise for pledge of allegiance. I also would like to uh, recognize our new president of the Mayor's Youth Advisory Board, Tyler Richards. How are you, Tyler? Um, good to see you. Thank you for coming. Invocation tonight will be given by Pastor Horace Ferguson from the Holly Springs United Methodist Church. Welcome back again, Pastor. Always good to see you. And he complains to me that people think he might be the mayor because he thinks he, well, never mind. <laughs> Shot at several times. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good they didn't shoot at me that way. So that means you get hazardous duty pay, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, ever exalted yet always near on whom we build all of our hopes and our aspirations. Be present with us here tonight and magnificently grace the Holly Springs Town Council with your wisdom and your guiding sway in matters before them now. Your hand has prompted visions and actions by so many for so much good in this still expanding and emerging town. We seek your continued lead in nurturing our leaders in their important work and grant us your intimate presence in this seat of government tonight. Bless and accept the service and work of this council and, and town staff here gathered and scattered we honor your presence and bless your holy name. And now would you join with me in a few moments of prayer for all of those impacted by floods in Texas and Florida and the islands and for the enormous earthquake today in Mexico which has taken better than 50 lives. Let us pray. <clears throat> O oh God, you divided the waters of chaos at creation. In Christ, you stilled storms, raised the dead, and vanquished <coughs> demonic powers. Tame the earthquakes and the wind and the waves and fire and all the forces that defy control or shock us by their fury. Keep us from calling disaster your justice upon people. Help us in good times and in distress to trust your mercy and yield to your power this day and forever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Good, good words. Thank you, Horace. I remember for adjustment and approval the September 19th, 2017 meeting agenda. And go. All right. Motion to adopt the September 19th, 2017 meeting agenda with the following changes. Remove from, from the consent agenda for discussion item 7F, the budget amendment and design of traffic signal in the Town Hall Commons project. Second. Motion been made and second all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Item number five, public comment period. Uh, again, I would ask each speaker to limit their comments to three minutes. That's kind of the way we do it. And the total comment period will be 15. And first up on the agenda is Christine Kelly. You know the rest.
Johnny has a clock. Johnny's got the clock. You do. I want to make she sure. You can get I have it to work. Time. All right, hi, I'm Christine. Hi. I'm Christine Kelly, 201 Grigsby Avenue. I have a lot to say, so I wrote it all down. My public comments are in reference to what I experienced in the September 5th town hall meeting and afterwards. Prior to September 5th, I did have communications with the town regarding work done at the corner of Raleigh and Grigsby Avenue. That experience prompted me to meet with the town and discuss some of the concerns I had about this project, particularly how I was getting information, but only pieces of what turns out of a larger story. The last council meeting I was approved to present as parts of the request and communication section of the agenda. To have the needed context for what I want to share tonight, you need to watch the video. I'm at 37.19 when I presented on the agenda item 7B and later at 48.44, you'll see the portion regarding the public hearing for the Town Hall Commons Master Plan. Unfortunately, since I have very limited time, I can really only summarize what I presented, but would be happy to provide the full timeline with anyone who wants. All the information I'm sharing now has been occurring in the last two weeks. On September 6th, I sent email requests to the town hall mayor, town manager, director of engineering, public affair, director of public affairs, and copy my husband. My first email was a follow-up to my presentation where I attached the slides. The second email on um, September 6th, we started a chain of communication regarding the public hearing. Um, and in that one, I was asking, what exactly did you approve last night as it pertains to any changes in the roads around the project? Um, because of finding out that there was a significant meeting in November, 25th, or November 2015 in a retreat where this was discussed, I was not aware of it. On September 6th, I asked for Freedom of Information Act request to get more information. And this is some of the communications I got. September 7th, um, I'm not going to have enough time. Um, I saw that Chuck said, have John Schifano respond to my inquiry. And then John responded to me. And in the comments, he was basically saying um, what was presented uh, didn't, was, not, was consistent with the master plan. And it sounds like the testimony had discomfort with decision making, which is not really what my intent was. And it sounds like he was saying the wisdom of the closure of, the of this road is what the town wants to do. I reported I was still unclear with the information. And then further, I got an email from John after several others. Mrs. Kelly, I understand that you have some public information requests pending our various employees at town hall. I really have no desire to create more and more records through responses to your emails and will later need to produce with subsequent records. I'm happy to speak to you directly so that public record won't need to be created. So I followed up and I did get a stick with some emails. On that stick, there was, um, starts with September 7th from um, Hank Dixon to Kendra, Chuck, and Daniel. It starts, I have no intention of supporting this politically charged effort for her to gain votes. Kendra answered with um, some of the, the information about a plan that I was asking for. And then Hank, um, Daniel Weeks further said, Hank, a major plan update as described below would be $75,000 to $105,000. Hank then replied on September 7th at 828, um, thanks. Uh, again, I would not want us to embark on anything which provides political capital. Um, there are some more emails around that, um, but I did want to jump to some of the other things that I found. In terms of the staff, I see Kendra. You're going to have to kind of wind it up. You're no worries. almost a minute over already. That's OK. Chip will take. Chip will take the next presentation. You can summate if you wish. What's that? You can summate. Oh, you want me to? Great. No. Uh, um, Maybe five or ten more seconds, please. I won't finish in five or ten seconds. I have facts, observations, and requests. Right. Then we'll let Chip come up. OK. There's other things here that I have that I can post in terms of the blogs, things that have said about me, um, and sometimes inappropriately. And I'll just have him skip to the, the bottom stuff. Okay. Thank you. I have all the information that supports all of these. There's more email. All right. Thank you. Chip or Charles Kelly? Charles Kelly. I also reside at 201 Grigsby Avenue. And uh, you just pointed someplace. Okay, all right. This is a continuation of public comments from my wife, Christine. Uh, we're at the facts that she would like to recap. Uh, Christine never got a response to her September 6th email asking about updating the plan. 
Uh, in her last email correspondence about what was discussed at the meeting uh, was with regards to making plans with Joni and John on September 12th. Uh, important conversations were happening about my request that only included Councilman Dixon, Chuck, Kendra, and other town staff, but not other town council members. Uh, another point, an updated VDAP plan was in the works, but due to unfortunate staff circumstances, it was not started, and the money was diverted for SAPI. Uh, another, my request for an updated VDAP was, has gone unanswered. And the email that uh, Christine received from the town attorney on September 12th was not part of the information that was shared on my meeting with John on September 15th. The export summary that was part of the information was dated September 15th at 8.57. I would have expe Christine would have expected to see that as part of the emails that she had requested. Uh, because of that missing email, it's unclear what other emails may also be missing from um, the response to the request for information. Christine may have been mischaracterized in the last two weeks on the web or to her personally by town staff or by Councilman Dixon on his Councilman Watch blog on the Facebook page as either making trouble, acting solely for political purposes, or quite unfortunate and amazing what people with political aspirations will do to get noticed. Uh, another point, the time frame to discuss the master plan in town council meetings was set by the town, not by Christine. When Christine declared her candidacy, she did not know that this project was going to be put forth. Uh, Christine has also spoken to one of the developers. They're very receptive. And, and when asked if their plans were tied to the closure of Raleigh Street, their response was neutral. And only through her request for, uh, through the Freedom of Information Act, could she, was she able to show some of this very important and insightful information. Um, the request that Christine's making is that the town work closer with residents in the spirit of cooperation, transparency, and engagement, and also that the town f strictly follow processes that are already in place per town statutes and North Carolina statutes. Uh, also that the town find the funds and move forward with the very important VDAP plan before making any road changes, to any streetlight changes, or other traffic related decisions. And also that Councilman Dixon be recused from any votes pertaining to motions associated with the master plan or elements in it, because he has demonstrated he is no longer objective and is not serving the interests of the residents in this, in this matter, and because evidence that she's collected has shown him to be prejudiced in this matter. Any questions? Nope. Thank you, Chip. Thanks. Charles, Charles, Chip. Thank you, um, Having a little trouble reading this, so I'm going to say, Hilda Liesel, am I close? Well, come on down. You want what? You want what's on the stage or behind the curtain? <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Your name and address again, please, for the record. It's Hilda Legal. It's 500 Indian Hill Road. And it's Holly Springs, North Carolina. Yep. And my issue is with the Indian Hill Road. There are two roads that basically go up to the Womble Park. One is Grigsby, then people go down Stinson, and they discover Indian Hill as another exit to the 55. What happens is it's used quite a lot, so it's suffered more use than any other streets in our development. What I would like to know is, is there any schedule in the next five years for resurfacing? Because right now it's pebbles and grass. And underneath you have main sewer lines, you have water lines, gas lines. And I think being it's a very wide street, it's gonna be a difficult thing to manage if it does break open. There's a big pit that drops into the drainage area and those pebbles go into the creek known as Utley, which is also part of the water management thing. So you should look at it when you get a chance. Okay. And just let us know what we can do about it, if um, we can help you or whatever else. Because our community is very tight and likes to see things go well. Thank I, you. I think your ears must have been ringing because it is on the agenda tonight to um, consider <laughs> the rehabilitation of uh, West Valentine Street and Indian Hill Road. Thank you. 
So I won't have to do that. Yeah, it's item 8A, so it's under new business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. At this point in time, we'll close the public hearing, or public comment, excuse me, and go to item 6A, public hearing, 17 DP06, exchange of the Holly Springs, Matt Baird. Hi, Matt. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Okay, so the next item in front of you is for a project called Exchange at Holly Springs. This is a multifamily proposal on the property included in the Southern Crossroads Master Plan. Now, the location of the Master Plan area is Ralph Stevens and uh, Piney Grove Wilbon at the uh, South Main Street Extension Project that was just opened up. Here's the Wildwood subdivision down here. Walmart's going to be up here. So the project is for 316 multifamily units um, at a density of um, less than 15 units per acre. And it's 14.65 or thereabouts um, on 21.57 acres. Uh, the project is the first of um, what looks to be two multifamily projects. It's, this area has not been brought in yet. Um, this project includes the area to the east and actually a connector that's 50 feet wide leading out to an open space parcel out here. And keep in mind, this site plan is actually rotated 90 degrees, so north is going to be facing to your left. Um, it is a series of uh, two to four story apartment buildings um, that range in size. Um, it includes your traditional larger apartment buildings as well as some um, apartment over garage units included down here. They propose an amenity site up front, be a pool and clubhouse that would come in um, with a development plan at a later date. They've met all of our uh, landscaping requirements and have matched that on the approved master plan sheets. As part of this proposal, uh, they have requested an alternate landscape request to preserve the natural vegetation um, within this wetland and stream buffered area and to relocate the required uh, perimeter yard landscaping closer to the buildings. So we're still going to get the buffer, the natural buffer, and the required. Um, additional vegetation. A quick look at some of the elevations that they've provided. This is the three-story model, four-story model, and the apartments over garage units. Elizabeth's going to come up and walk you through some of the engineering stuff. Good evening, Elizabeth. As you are aware, this site is a part of the Southern Crossroads project, and so a lot of the infrastructure was already addressed um, in that um, master plan. But I'll walk through what the um, where the utilities and transportation improvements are um, showing up. Water for this site will come from a 12-inch water line that's on the proposed loop road. Um, that will be a part of the master plan. Um, that um, water line connects to a 12-inch water line on Ralph Stevens. The sewer for this site goes to the south and ties into the um, Holly Springs Basil Creek Pump Station, which is at the rear of Wildwood Subdivision. This um, site was a part of the master plan that had a traffic study done and was reviewed by DOT, and there are no other um, additional improvements needed for this project as a part of that since it was accounted for in that TIA. Um, it is a part of the um, Bass Lake 
um, and Noose River Basin. So the apl applicable requirements of those basins and stream buffers are shown. And the stormwater control measures needed to serve this site are um, shown here and meet standards. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions of Elizabeth or comments? When is the proposed loop road <coughs> put in? Is it Will it be put in as part of this project or will it be put in <coughs> after this project? It, it will be put in ahead of this project um, because it is the access that's needed in order to pull the, the drive off uh, for this. So that'll, that'll give you those two points of uh, ingress and egress Correct. out of this project. Okay. Correct. Any other questions or comments? Could you describe just uh, the sidewalk situation around the uh, exchange? So this site being a part of the Southern Crossroads uh, master plan had a developer agreement associated with that. Um, it was related to some acquisition of right of way for our Main Street extension project. Um, one of the terms of that agreement was um, connected to road improvements and sidewalks are a part of that. And that is not being required unless it was triggered by DOT requirement. Um, and so the road frontage of Ralph Stevens Road is not being widened like we typically see that would have widening curb and gutter and sidewalk. Um, that would be something that we would have to um, pursue at a later time. So there are sidewalks within the site and along the loop road. The only one that is not a part of this is the Ralph Stevens Road one. Anything else? Mm -mm. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Back to you, Matt. So the planning board uh, unanimously recommended approval. Um, the representative tonight is Sean McGrath. He is here. Um, so on top of uh, discussing the architectural quality of the buildings, they like how they looked, um, they had also discussed the developer's agreement and the commitments made as part of that. So if you have any questions from, for Sean, he can come up and answer them if you have. Them. Any further questions? That's, that's all. That was the only two major discussion points that they had was just those points and everything else. That's it? Yeah. Okay. The parameters of the discussion was exactly the existing tie-in. Tie-in to the Walmart area and other things. Yeah, that's... Thank you. Thank you. Do we need a presentation from the applicant at all? Good. Got all the information you need. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, we're going to open a public hearing. And um, first person up is Allison Anderson. And Allison, again, for the record, name and address, please. Good evening, my name is Allison Anderson Yarborough and I live at 112 Durban Meadow Drive in the Wildwood community that this is going to directly impact. And I have three major concerns. And the first is that we moved here for the single family lifestyle that Holly Springs has to offer. And by bringing in multifamily complex units kind of goes contrary to what I believed Holly Springs was about people usually move out here for the single family. We're concerned about the increase in traffic and crime that rentals do have, concerning that we've already had a lot of break-ins with cars and with the new developments. I'm also concerned about the traffic coming on to Ralph Stevens from turning from 55 as it is now, it is highly dangerous turning into our community off of 55 because there's not a turn lane. And with increased traffic, I can only assume that getting more and more dangerous, as well as having some type of buffer, if this is going to go forward between our community and this new proposed community, having some kind of tree buffer that's more than just one tree and having it not have any road access into our community just to limit um, the amount of traffic because we did move out here for 
what Holly Springs has to offer instead of staying in Raleigh where you have apartments right next to single family homes. We were hoping to see more single family homes around our development. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Shannon Watson, you were here early. Name and address, please, again. My name is Shannon Watson. I live at 313 Atwood Drive in the Wildwood subdivision as well. Um, I'm going to echo a couple of things that Allison said. Um, I was hoping that in that immediate area we would see more single family homes and or townhomes. Um, I'm extremely concerned with the amount of traffic that this is going to bring to Ralph Stevens. Um, if it's 316 units, I can see that adding 500 easy cars to Ralph Stevens per day. Um, as Allison said, there's no turn lane onto Ralph Stevens, so when I have to slow down um, to turn onto Ralph Stevens off of 55, I'm constantly nervous that I'm going to get rear-ended. So. Um, bringing more traffic onto Ralph Stevens is a concern, um, as well as the traffic issues we already see um, with the uh, Main Street extension to Ralph Stevens that just opened up, the traffic issues we've had over there with um, the dozen accidents, um, as well as the traffic backups on Avent Ferry. I feel like this is going to be another Avent Ferry um, case turning on to 55 um, if there's 360 plus units and then more to come in the future. Um, I'm also concerned if any would be deemed section 8 in the future um, and what the options are for us to possibly get this changed over to more townhome or single family if there's anything that we can do petition wise or anything moving forward. If not um, we would like to see a, more of a buffer put in between our neighborhood and the apartments. Um, no connection to our neighborhood. A turn lane added on Highway 55 onto Ralph Stevens. Um, and I believe we had heard, and it could be rumored, that it was going to look like Main Street across, um, of us, across 55 from us with the commercial on the bottom. Um, so we would prefer that to have commercial on the bottom instead of all residential. Um, I'm not sure what the options are with that. That's all. Okay, thank you. So I'll wait till that was over. The next person signed up, I, I'm sorry I can't read the last name, but the first name is Thomas. I'm sorry. And please, your name and address, please. I'm Thomas Ryan, R-H-Y-N-E, and I live at 140 Mistwood Hollow. I'm in the Wildwood subdivision also. A um, couple of the concerns that I have, um, I appreciate based on what I see here is that they're leaving the existing buffer, the stream buffers as they are, but it would appear that <coughs> the tree lines that they've added at the edge of the complex looks like they could be strengthened along that creek side on the which would be the east side if i'm reading this right the east side along there where they show a much denser buffer towards the rear uh, the south end of that property versus the east side i think that could be strengthened um, as a concern that i have for additional buffer during this construction i mean i appreciate the fact that they're leaving it um, <clears throat> and I don't know the answer to this, maybe somebody can tell me, what is the projected start date of this? I mean, when are they actually gonna break ground and start digging and uh, is it this year, is it next year? I don't even know if we have that and normally we don't do a dialogue in this particular section, but uh, Matt, do you have any start dates on that yet? I don't think we do, do we? The applicant, the applicant might be able to Possibly. give you an estimate. Is the applicant here? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, well, go ahead and finish your point. And then okay, I'll okay. Go ahead. Um, part of my other concern is, is that during this project, uh, I know the town, I've talked to the environmental section for the town, they're concerned about a lot of the insects that may come as a part of this construction from standing water, from Zika, and some of the things that, that I work with. And I just wanted to make sure that some of that runoff 
um, is going to be make sure that because they've got a retention pond, I think here at the back of the facility is going to be sufficient for this entire facility. And there may be more than one. I didn't see it, but this is an awful big project to have just one one collection, which is at the southern end of this, if I'm reading this right. So that's, those are my concerns. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, last, and then we'll get the applicant next. Next is, I want to say this right, Ashima Sani. Am I close? Close, but not, not perfect, right? So again, your name and address, please, and then I'll get it right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Asha Masood. Uh, I live in 316 Atwood Drive, the Wildwood uh, community same as my neighbor friends, uh, have a couple of concerns and I want to bring those up. Uh, first is um, that the 55 highway has a speed limit of 55, 55 and when turning to a ride onto Ralph Stevens, it, it really uh, scares me taking a ride. There's no right turn lane and people behind almost push on their brakes all of a sudden and then it's, it's scary. With 316 more units built, 500, 700 uh, cars more coming in, it's not just going to back up Ral Ralph Stevens, but it's also going to back up 55 and overall Holly Springs roads. Um, with our uh, Wildwood community, it's more of a kiddie community with, every, with each house having small, you know, small one or two kids. It's, it's going to be really unsafe for the kids with uh, next door 316 uh, town home, not town homes, but the apartment units, and uh, I just feel it's uh, it'll be un unsafe for everyone. Okay. So, uh, and then again, across the street there's a Main Street Square uh, community which also has apartments, and then again with apartments right across there are more uh, apartments coming in. This on Ralph Stevens, it's it's actually going to increase the traffic. What we are at as of now, we are actually. A, with a lot of, we are living with a lot of traffic. With more units coming in, it's going to be more traffic again. So uh, it will be not just our community; it will be everyone in living in Holly Springs. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. If the applicant just tell me when the start date is, if you have it, is the applicant here? You can just tell me. Not, well, come on, spring of next year. Okay, that answers the question. Was on the table. I right, thank you. At this point in time, we'll close the public hearing. And I was further discussion. If, yeah, please. I was wondering if Matt could. Um, there was some questions about the uh, landscape buffer. Sure. I was wondering if you could sure explain thing. what, um, like the B seventy five and B forty, what those, uh, what those specifically mean, and and why there are those <clears throat> on the various sides of the uh, of the, the parcel. So it has to do with adjacent zoning, um, and <coughs> pull it up real quick. Mm -hmm. So the um, the property over to the east, showing us a CB commercial business zoning district. And so when you have a commercial district next to a residential district, you're going to have the buffering on the residential side more so than the commercial side. And um, you're going to have a much lesser um, buffer requirement for a multifamily development next to a commercial than you would for a multifamily next to a residential. So to the south, it, it remains a residentially zoned property. <laughs> And so you're going to have a heftier buffer along the south side. And I think one thing that kind of compounds um, the planting requirement is the width of this passage is 50 feet, of which you're going to have planting buffers on either side, because you're going to have on the south side the B75 for RMF 15 next to R30. And on the north side, you're going to have a um, on 
on the north side, you're going to have a B40 for RMF15 to RMF15 because this property up here has the same zoning. So what those things mean is the, the type B is a semi-opaque buffer, which means it has an evergreen requirement and um, a width requirement. Now, the number associated with that is the plant unit value that we assign uh, to different planting types. So um, an evergreen shrub is not going to have the same PUV as an evergreen tree um, that's six feet tall when it's planted. Um, same as a deciduous tree is going to have a lower PUV than um, a large evergreen tree. So basically what that means is for these B75s, you're getting 75 plant unit value per 100 feet of that buffer. And so really, I mean, with the required preservation per our um, stormwater requirements, I believe stream buffers, um, it's town mandated stream buffer requirement here that will all be protected So they will not be able to go in and take out those trees In addition to that preservation There is the b40 buffer that's going to be going in there, which again has an evergreen requirement So even if this is all deciduous, which, which I do not believe it is um, You're not going to have a whole lot of visibility uh, through that buffer, even in the dead of winter. It was more for, yeah, for us. I understand. What um, what's the the, the footage roughly? The of of what total? In that area there, it's twenty twenty. Of that protected area? Yeah. Oh, Just, I'm not sure what. That you is. wouldn't know. I don't have that number on hand. It's a hundred feet. <laughs> you get to come up again. Thank you. Without the microphone, I know it's hard to hear. So, right. um, the stream buffer is a Bass Lake buffer, so it's a hundred, and it's Noose, Noose River Basin, so it's a hundred foot buffer. So the portion here mm -hmm. is protected by that buffer with a hundred foot uh, from top of bank on either side. The landscape buffer requirements are beyond that, okay. and are on the property side. In this case, and how okay. much? Of, how many? What are the footage on each one of those? Is it twenty or twenty 50? or? Yeah. So that yeah. So the minimum requirement for a Type B buffer is uh, ten feet. Ten feet. So you've got hundred feet plus at minimum ten feet on each side. So it's one hundred twenty, right. basically right. about one hundred twenty foot wide strip of land running through there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Um, sure. What about the uh, possibility of the turn lane? <coughs> The intersection of Ralph Stevens and 55 was something that DOT required to be studied as a part of the traffic study that was done for Southern Crossroads. Um, with that, it was determined that that intersection does need to be converted to a super street. Um, that, that's the next best thing that needs to happen there. It does not warrant it right now. So what we did when Southern Crossroads came through was accepted a fee in lieu, actually DOT required it, um, and a fee in lieu was accepted for their portion of the impact of that intersection. So they, Southern Crossroads alone did not trigger the improvement to happen right now, but they triggered an impact to that intersection. So we required a fee so that we could help convert that intersection when another project does trigger it. Um, there's a lot of other things that are happening in that area. That intersection has been studied two or three times. So um, as commercial developments happen on either side of that intersection, it, it would be looked at again. So what you're saying is right now with uh, Wildwood and with um, Southern Crossroads, what's going in right now? Um, we can look DOT closer at the at the right turn lane question itself. Yeah. I know that that intersection's been looked at of would there be any improvements needed and a right turn lane did not come out of that evaluation. We can ask again. We can ask DOT again. I, I mean, I, that, that's yeah, perfectly that'd fine. Be, that'd be a good idea with, the, with mm -hmm. this. The comments. We yeah, definitely. Yeah. I know exactly what they're saying. Yep. It does seem to be a common concern mm -hmm. in turn lanes in and out of the. the, the I, I, I jotted subject. it down. Even if you guys hadn't <laughs> said it, it was going to be on my list to, to circle back on our end. Okay. Yeah. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Other discussion. Mm -hmm. The connecti the connectivity between the two communities that was mentioned more than once, mm -hmm. and I want to just mention this stream buffer. There is no planned connectivity right. between this community, mm -hmm. and. 
Wildwood. So no bridges. The, the only other item that I think I heard that was related to transportation. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else, Matt? Nope. No set. Any further discussion while Matt's up? If not, no. All right. Thank you, Matt. Suggestion motion, there is one. I make the motion to approve development plan 17 DP06 for exchange at Holly Springs as submitted by Civil Design Concepts PA, project number 11671, with the conditions as listed in the agenda packets. Motion made to hear a second? Second. Motion made to second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, and thank you, Matt. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda, Mayor Pro Tem. Motion to adopt the consent agenda. Oh, yeah, that was already zoned. Yeah. Second. Right, hang on. Did I hear a second? Second. Motion remains seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And we're going to go right into the item that uh, was requested to take off the consent agenda. That'll be kind of under new business main street valentine signal design and um you going to tackle this one Aaron? i am thank you very much mayor right, town you. council um yeah as you stated this was pulled off the consent agenda correct and i'm happy to speak about it uh, so for those in the audience that are not familiar with the town hall commons project uh, it's a downtown development project the town is really excited about we've got a public private partnership between the town and two developers that are each building um, 45 to 60,000 square feet of active commercial space. Uh, and this is just south of Town Hall uh, in between the blocks of uh, Ballantyne and Oak and Main and Avon Ferry. So as part of this project, um, the town had hired um, a traffic consultant to perform a traffic impact analysis uh, we wanted to see what kind of impact uh, this 90,000 to 110,000 square foot of uh, retail would have on the downtown roads. Um, this was completed and used the uh, downtown transportation plan as a base. So that, that transportation plan was, I think, presented in early 2016 to town council. Um, as part of the project, the town would be uh, providing some infrastructure for these developments and for future downtown developments. This would include a widening Avent Ferry, adding some on-street parking. Uh, the existing Rogers Street would be realigned where it connects with uh, Raleigh and Main Street. We would eliminate that K intersection and provide uh, a more desirable and safer a 90 degree intersection. Uh, the creation of uh, West Rogers would also be constructed, connecting Main Street to Avon Ferry. Um, so the results of the traffic impact analysis, which were presented uh, at the last town council meeting on September 5th, um, Sean Ryan and Elizabeth Goodson presented those results. I just took a clip from that screenshot, but um, some of the results that came from that were that um, the intersection of Ballantyne and uh, Main Street uh, went from a level service of about C to a level of service about F. Um, so typically what happens when you have a projected traffic impact uh, that would trigger an F level of service is uh, the town would monitor that intersection for a signal. Uh, we would typically need to go through and see DOT warrant analysis uh, and then justify a signal at that spot. Uh, since I think two town council meetings ago, the town decided to uh, proceed with adopting Main Street. Um, the town would not be required to follow DOT's requirements for a signal, uh, for signal warrants in order to install a signal. So in order to provide a good design and to kind of incorporate the projects together with the future need of a 
uh, traffic signal at that location, we decided to go ahead with the signal design for that location. The signal uh, is proposed to provide a level service of, I think it was uh, a B in the AM mor in the morning hours and a C in the afternoon. And these are peak hour level of service uh, projections which would be very acceptable to the town. Um, let's see what else. You know, the, the, the whole benefit to including the signal design with the other projects being designed at this point is, you know, a signal has a lot of uh, subterranean needs, space. Uh, there's a lot of utilities running through this area to have that signal designed concurrently with the two projects would allow us to avoid uh, tearing up newly constructed uh, asphalt curb uh, and re relocating utilities in the future. So we wanted to go ahead and move forward with, with that design at this point. Um, so that is a uh, basic summary of, of this contract. And the there. funding would come from street reserves, is that correct? Uh, the contract, yes. Contract? Yes. 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 Okay, just double check. Yes. Uh, questions, comments, discussion? No, I, I appreciate the, uh, the discussion around this, Aaron, and, and the, um, the detail of, of why the design is now. And, and uh, I guess the ownership, we would not own this light at this point because DOT has not approved our request to yes, adopt Main Street. Exactly. The, the request to adopt the Main Street and Avon Ferry uh, is into DOT. They are going to be presenting that to their board. Uh, things are looking good from just uh, casual conversations with the DOT representatives, uh, but we wanted to design it per their standards. This would be the town's first operated and maintained signal. Um, so designing it per DOT standards seems like a, a safe uh, conservative method. Um, something that the, the contract also spelled out was we would not be uh, designing it to sync up with the signal at Maine and Holly Springs Road. Uh, the reason for that being that there's a, quite a distance between the two and then also DOT would not allow us to synchronize our signal with theirs. Um, but we are uh, requiring that the, the, the traffic <coughs> signal cabinet be um, wired and be ready to connect to our fiber optic optic system for uh, just control by town hall uh, and cameras so we could monitor that signal we have optic we have optic out there at the yes yes we do right up main street are there questions or comments so on the study that we did for the tia for main street correct mm -hmm. yes this for also this also included uh, raleigh street right the traffic study we did for the downtown transportation plan included right. the Raleigh Street closing. So all the information that we have warrants the light to be to be there, correct? Yeah. Well, what it does is it brings the level of service to an F. Now the warrant list for DOT is, I, I couldn't rattle off, there must be a dozen different warrants, but if you meet a certain amount of them, uh, it does trigger and warrant a signal. Uh, just the level of service is not enough. There are some other requirements that would uh, trip that requirement, the need for the signal. I just want to make sure that we're not rushing, you know, to go right to stage four, that we've got stage one, two, and three to get to four, and that we've got all our information in regards to the traffic that surrounds that entire area that a light is warranted. So I hate to spend $12,000 and, sure. and, you know, waste taxpayers' money if we don't need this. So what as I, long as we've got information to support this, and I, that's what I want to hear. I think that's a great point. Um, but what I could tell you is that $12,000 is just for the design right, right now. What we will do is adjust the developments around that design. Uh, at some point, if we decide it's not warranted, a signal isn't warranted, we don't have to construct, and the signal could be anywhere from uh, current estimates are one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand um, dollars. I could tell you that the twelve thousand dollars would be uh, quickly recouped 
or quickly spent if we did not design that now and we had to say go back later and pull up some decorative crosswalks or uh, just cut asphalt that that money would go very quickly okay okay uh, that, that makes sense yep. um, but again on the data that we have today we're really not a hundred percent sure that this warrants <coughs> a light per DOT standards um, no but I think the town's requirements for a light may be slightly different than DOT standards. I mean, I think we've seen with past projects that sometimes uh, the town would like to have stricter standards than, than the mm -hmm. DOT warrant list. Uh, we would like that flexibility, and that's a decision we can uh, come to at a later date um, at the cost of $12,000. Elizabeth has something to add, I think. I think Aaron's got it. It just the traffic study that was done identified <coughs> this as an intersection to monitor for a signal. If it was with a DOT street, we would start the signal warrant process and analyze whether or not it met warrants. Just as we've done with other intersections that we anticipate a signal, doing the signal design as soon as we know that we might need a signal is important for a lot of the reasons Aaron just outlined. The, the constraints in this area are very tight and so knowing where we need those pieces to go is important. Having the signal design on the table means that as soon as we determine we're ready to install it, we can do that um, and start that process because ordering, there's a lot of lead time on other aspects of it. So it helps us get ready. Yeah, one of the points that we are concerned about is uh, the type of pole we would be looking at. Um, a standard pole that you'd see on say the bypass, a uh, mono curve mast arm is not the sort of pole we wanna see in downtown that there's not a lot of room for that sort of structure. Um, so that's something else we were looking into. Something else I didn't mention is uh, we do plan on recouping uh, a portion of the cost for the actual uh, the design. And if we decide to move forward at a later date with the construction of a signal uh, from the developers, we're anticipating about uh, 14 to 15% of this cost would be paid by them. And again, we're transferring twelve grand from the street reserves anyway. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Is, yeah, okay. All right. Other questions or comments? Looking good? All right. So I want to tackle a motion. Motion to adopt an amendment to the fiscal year 2017-18 budget in the amount of $12,000 to use street reserve funds for design of a traffic signal in the town hall commons project and to award a contract to Kimley Horn and Associates for the design work. Second. Motion been made and second all in favor. Aye. Opposed? Motion nay. passed. One nay, excuse me. One nay. Agenda item 8A, new business. 2017 Street Improvement Project, Town of Holly Springs Project, number 16-015, Dirk <laughs> Siebenbrot. Hi, Dirk. Good evening, Mayor Sears. Good evening, Town Council. Good evening. Sorry. Ah, that's where I was looking for. Tonight I'm presenting to you the 2017 Street Improvement Project. The town maintains over 110 miles of existing roadway, which are all reviewed and ranked on a regular basis. For this purpose, a street rating survey was completed last year with the results used to identify the streets that needs, need to be resurfaced. Based on this survey, along with other factors like traffic volume and interconnectivity, among others, the roads as shown on the exhibit were included, which were West Ballantyne Street and Indian Hill Road. West Ballantyne Street will be will be improved from the Saranac Ridge Road to West Elm Avenue and Indian Hill Road will be will be um, improved from Wolf Bridge Road to Stinson Avenue. 
funding for this project will be provided through the Powell Bill. We are recommending to award the contract in the amount of $481,006.01 and approve funding in the amount of $505,000, including 5% one, including contingency, to Turner Asphalt, Inc. Any questions or comments? Questions, of Dirk? I think we answered the young lady's question. Indian Trail. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite welcome. Like somebody said, your ears were definitely burning. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions at this point? Looking good? Bid and everything, so. Go for it. All good. Motion to award contract to the lowest responsible bidder, Turner Asphalt Inc., in the amount of $481,006.01, and to approve funding in the amount of $505,000, including a 5% contingency, for the 2017 Street Improvement Project. Second. Motion made and second all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. And I bet Gina Clapp is up next. Am I correct? That's correct. See how smart I am. Agenda item 8B, new business. Downtown Village District Pocket Park Budget, 108 North Main Street. Gina Clapp. Good evening. <laughs> Mark, you got to bring the camera down a little bit. I'm not as tall as everybody. Um, so staff has been working on getting some plans together and some cost estimates to improve the town's property at 108 North Main Street. As we've been working with some developers on the south side of Town Hall, we were recognizing the fact that the town owns several parcels on the north side of Main Street in the downtown area and wanted to start looking at some ways that we can improve the appearance of these lots as new investments going to be beginning in downtown and making sure that we keep our village district very attractive and poised for additional growth in, um, as things move forward. And so some of you might be familiar with the old clothes closet that used to be oh, on the yeah. property at 108 North Main Street. This building was removed in 2011-2012 by the town. Um, it was in great disrepair and could not be repaired at any kind of cost efficient manner. As a result of the removal of the building, it left the foundation, the parking lot, and all the pavement on that parcel. And so um, there was some discussions internally, and we worked together with Parks and Rec and Public Works, and the Public Works Department was able to mobilize before the end of the fiscal year and remove all of the pavement that they had um, remaining out in this um, site. So the driveway here is actually part of the house that's behind the Main Street Mini Mart. So the driveway remains, but all of this pavement was removed. And Public Works also had some extra dirt as they were working on several projects within the Village District or close to the Village District area that they were able to fill in and make a good bed for some new seating. And they've worked with engineering to ensure stormwater um, drains are being cleared and not affected by this project as well. So we've had a lot of people out on site taking a look at this. And now we're looking at the finalization of stabilizing the site and landscaping the, the site. Uh, through conversations with our building code department, it has become aware to us that we cannot put benches or art or anything that would be an attracting device on this property if we did, we then needed to provide paved ADA accessible parking to the entire property. Mm -hmm. And so we have, as a result, um, reduced our scope of the project a little bit. And what we are proposing to do is to seed the property and the Parks and Recreation Department is able to pro purchase that seed, um, put that in, and then also water it um, so that it'll grow. And they will are suggesting that we use the Bermuda seed. They've used that in other parks um, throughout the town, Sug Farm Park, as well as North Main. They've had good success with seeding that. And then we've been working also with Greenscapes, who is the town's contract for landscaping. And Greenscapes will come in, and they will put a row of holly shrubs on either side of the property. Um, these pink dots are some crepe myrtles and then a couple rose bushes along the front. 
Uh, along this portion of North Main Street, the crepe myrtle with pink flowers is the designated street tree, so that would continue that theme along North Main Street. And then having some breaks here in the shrub row, should somebody be in there and they needed to get out, there's an easy way to access through the site, but it would preclude any cars from being able to drive through and park onto this property. And so with that, we are ready to start moving forward and Greenscapes has given us a budget of approximately $5,789. So we are requesting to proceed with a contract with Greenscapes in that amount with a contingency which would be six thousand three sixty seven ninety and then parks and rec to do the seating and watering of the site questions of gina comments what would be the time frame for completion greenscapes is ready to start on september 25th and then once they are completed parks and rec would be able to seed that property within the next week or two after that so it will be done in time for parade and everything oh like certainly oh, yeah good point other questions or comments definitely an improvement uh over what, down, what, down yeah. compared yep. to what was there for sure ah yes that's it motion please motion to authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with greenscape for landscape material and installation at 108 north main street pocket park the total amount not to exceed six thousand three hundred and sixty seven dollars and ninety cents second Motion been made in second all favor aye. aye opposed motion passed unanimously thank you miss gina thank you thank you item number nine other business i got a couple things um october 1st just to remind you uh bullying is still going on in our schools and i'm getting a lot of calls and a lot of emails on issues about bullying. So on October 1st at the Hope Community Church, there will be a massive event. We'll have free pizza, uh, soft drinks, etc. And there will be a, uh, about a two hour uh, with a band event to fight this, the bullying thing that we, we all run against. So you're all welcome to come, no charge. And uh, we'll have a workshop and a few other things. So that's number one. Number two, crosswalk safety. Keep reminding, I think I still think we're getting a little better, but crosswalk safety, speeding. Last night we had the mayor's association meeting and uh, we go around the table and talk about what's going on in our towns. There's a lot of similarities with every town in Wake County. We are now moving in 67 people a day, 67 people a day into Wake County. That portends a lot of different things. And that's about all I got on that. Um, other other business? Yeah, I, I have something that's sort of along the topic of um, the village district area plan. Mm -hmm. um, I get some recent uh, social media uh, activities uh, actually really prompted me to, to read it again. <coughs> and uh, one of the recommendations that it made was to uh, to establish a or to uh, create a historic district. Um, in downtown Holly Springs. So um, when I read that, I went ahead and I, I looked at a few various plans that were um, I found online, one of which was the uh, Glenwood, Brooklyn uh, Historic District in Raleigh. And um, seeing that and seeing what the uh, VDAP says, um, what I'll, I'd like to recommend, and I'm just kind of looking for concurrence by the council at this point, um, <laughs> but just that after the uh, southern, I mean, southern area uh, planning initiative, uh, you know, uh, completes that uh, that the the town look into a historic district for the area within that uh, village district area plan. So again, I just want to throw that out for uh, potential discussion uh, or thoughts on that to uh, for us to start that. Uh, I know that those documents are pretty long. I I can't. Say, I'll say I did not read the entire Glenwood Brooklyn plan. It was like 80 pages. I'll have to say I, I just pretty much skimmed over it. Um, but I would like mm -hmm. that uh, we give it some thought to uh, embark on uh, on uh, engaging a, a, a contractor or a, a consultant to, uh, to 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 start that process. Other comments. Uh, Joni, in reference to uh, the Kellys uh, test when they spoke today, 
can you share that those emails uh, with us? Because I don't, I don't have that those emails. I mean, it John. was, it was, a, you know, there was a public document request, and here it is. You, I mean, we, I can, I can put it up there. It's basically, it was a uh, query that we ran on all town, townwide um, email servers regarding the presence of the word closure of Raleigh Street and some right. variant, mm -hmm. and it was we a, every, you know, so every time it's few hundred emails but only from probably a dozen or so people in town um or in the, the town staff so during during the period of the record request um okay. so i don't know how we would i mean i i can copy this five times seven times if oh, you want uh, I, or or you I can get it yeah that's fine take, take a look at it yeah that's it's fine. just a. Um, that's fine and the other thing is uh this friday night uh uh, our football team, Holly Springs football team, is uh, playing Heritage, and it's a uh, gold night out, and uh, it's for kids uh, that are uh, surviving cancer. So the entire school is going to be dressed in gold, and I believe they're going to be selling T-shirts there. It's one of the biggest, biggest nights there, for sure. So just want to check that out. So, okay. Go Hawks. I have a number of things, so bear with me sure. first congratulations to uh, chief herring and his officers for pulling off a really successful 10k 5k and 10k run on saturday uh well done and and to chief uh smith for the unveiling of the 9 11 memorial uh last week uh that's if you haven't had a chance stop by and and check it out it's uh it's really nice um also uh dog day at the park was was fantastic great weather and and a lot of happy dogs out there and parks and rec had a really nice nice and informative booth um this this weekend saturday we have the food truck rodeo downtown so i'm looking forward to that but the holly springs united methodist church also has its fall carnival and i know a few of us up here will be sitting in the dunk tank so if you, if you have a, a grievance or want to have some fun uh, come in i'm actually going to have blue hair that day are you going I, I will have blue hair yeah yeah i'm growing it over the yep <laughs> i'm not going to comment on that yep so uh that that should be a lot of fun um the drug uh, abuse prevention council of southwest wake county had its kickoff meeting um last week and uh be on the lookout for uh Christine and, and Tom and Hank and the mayor and I and, and others for more information coming out of that. And uh, this Thursday is Southern Area Planning Initiative Community Engagement uh, event. So please come out, spread the word. Your input is extremely important to the success of this. Oh, it's, it's right here, right, uh, right here. There'll be a presentation here in council chambers three presentations, 5.30, and 7, after which uh, you'll be guided downstairs to uh, ask questions, provide input, and uh, just be a part of the process. 5.30 to 8 total, okay? Anybody else? <laughs> we good? Chuck, we covered Chuck. We good? All right, manager's report. We can pass. Uh, okay. Uh, no, that is that's it is something that the Southern Area Planning Initiative, uh, as Councilman Billitson brought up, it, it this will be our first of three community meetings, and uh, we 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 expect we anticipate we're prepared to have a, a you know rather uh, well attended event, yep. uh, and if those visiting can give us a few minutes of their time, we'd like to share it with them through displays and a brief PowerPoint presentation what the current land use policies of the town are. Also a brief overview of what the transportation uh, overlay looks like in the affected region. And then when you go downstairs, if you have specific questions, we'll have staff members <coughs> present uh, in the Holloman room. Uh, and then at the end, you'll be asked to do a brief survey. Uh, we'll, we'll try to be uh, 
cognizant of your time, but I would think the entire process from probably, if, for example, if you come in at 530, the whole process, you could be out in less than an hour. Uh, so hopefully you'll come, you'll, you'll leave with uh, better informed uh, than before. And of course, the staff will have information to them. We'll be better informed as a result as well. So we're looking forward to it. To give you a little more time, tell us again the date and the time. Uh, that's on Thursday. Uh, at Town Hall at 5.30, 6.15, and 7 o'clock. So we'll have three different sessions. So uh, just, I think if you just float in during one of those periods of time, then you can join one of the sessions. That's good. Yes. All right. So, that it? Uh, Mark Andrews shared with me just before I came to the meeting today that NerdWallet has recognized us as the sixth best community in North Carolina to raise a family. I saw that. So, uh I think we've dropped a couple notches. I'm not sure why, but well, we were, uh, we're usually yeah, there. We're in the, yeah, we're we're always there toward the top, though. So that's that's worth mentioning, a lot nonetheless. Of in. Well, never mind. Yes. Okay. That's all I have, sir. All right. Counselor. Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. There's a, a need for to discuss two things in closed session. Um, one is the character performance and uh, um, of a personnel. Um, to wit the town manager's annual performance review yes, pursuant to 143.318.11A6, and also to discuss the um, location of an industry um, and some, uh, or a potential location of industry pursuant to 143.318.11A4. I've been checking his numbers out when he says all this. I've been kidding him about making them up, but you know what? He hasn't been. They're they're very good. Excellent. I I'm, I'm, make other things up, but yeah, right. not numbers. I'll make the motion to go into closed session based on those general statutes. Second. It's been made. Second, all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you for coming. Y'all for being here.